Do you want to know why you get addicted to certain personality types? Coming up in this episode. What's up, Legend? It's Sherman here from Geek Psychology, where I help geeks, gamers, and creatives to play life better. I have been through this struggle before, and I see the question a lot um, of like INFPs coming to me and saying like, well, how do I find an ENFJ? Because I, I need an ENFJ. Somebody says that I need it, you know, or I just, I love ENTJs or ENTPs, or ISTPs, ISFPs, whatever it is, INFJs. And it's just like, how do I get them in my life? Because I need them. And so I want to explain a little bit about why this happens and whether it's a good thing, a bad thing, or just a thing. So I think the easiest way to go about this is to explain a little bit about personality type um, and, and what the, the functions are doing, what the different aspects of yourself are doing, some of these pushes and pulls that create this kind of hooked on addicted sensation. And so in order to explain this, I want to bring in some a, a kind of different perspective, a different way of looking at the cognitive functions. Uh, if that's beyond you and what you know, it's okay. Just kind of follow along. If you've played a game before, an RPG or something like that, then you'll resonate with this pretty easily. Um, if not, you'll still be okay. Um, so the different groupings of cognitive functions with the IPs, for example, you know, we're, we're focused on specializing because an introverted judging function is it's, it's kind of intention is to take all of your experiences or your, your ideas, your understanding of the world, your thoughts, collect them in some way that is like your unique understanding, your unique identity, it gives you autonomy, gives you agency, right? Let's you be you. And the, the kind of maverick aspect of that, the fourth function, the inferior aspirational function, um, is a controller-like energy. Extroverted judging functions, extroverted thinking, extroverted feeling, they want to create some sort of like structure in the outer world. And that structure could be through organizing logically, or it could be through understanding the values of people and creating the the bonds and the the connections right so that you have a, a safe place to exist so that you understand what everybody is wanting and doing and then you can kind of bring that power of everybody together us working together to achieve a greater goal or whatever it is you know there are tons of different ways that you can use these functions but the, the kind of core drive of that is to create some sort of outer control over the situation. And so for the IPs, we spend so much time specializing that we don't spend a lot of time creating that control. Um, for IFPs, for example, like we're, we're like, I need to know who I am at this core deep down identity level. And when I finally know that, then I can start pursuing my dream then I can start, you know, achieving those goals and creating control over my life um, in the outer world. The ITPs, for example, you know, you're, I'm, I'm going to gain all the knowledge, assimilate all the knowledge that I can, all the information, all the data, and just really make true sense of it. And when it's perfect, then I can share it with the world. Then I can even save the world. I know a lot of ITPs that like eventually after focusing so much on an idea, on a, on a thought and creating, architecting, architecting, building that thought into the real world, it's with the intention of like helping humanity, right? Helping humanity control what it's doing by having a different understanding of things. And so everybody has these kind of dynamics back and forth, okay? So the EPs, for example, they lead with an extroverted perceiving function, extroverted intuition, extroverted sensing. This is a way of gathering more and more information, learning about the world. This plays the role of the vanguard. Okay, this is that in the front line, you know, creating new emergence or just being in in the field, right? Scouting, 
being adaptive, being spontaneous. And because they're spending so much time on that, they're not spending a lot of time in their, their maverick kind of energy of protecting the introverted perceiving functions I call protectors, which are the ones that are looking to hindsight, introverted sensing or foresight, introverted intuition to create or to, to kind of see what is going to happen, right? You can look to hindsight and say, okay, well, this worked before I should implement that. We can stabilize the present and the future through that. You could also vision into the future and say, okay, this is where things are going. This is what's going to happen. How do I understand that and maybe shift my actions or at least have the the foresight, the awareness to adapt to that or to prevent it. And so ESFPs, for example, or ESTPs even, are going to you know be so vanguard-like in their actions, taking actions, being spontaneous, not wanting to be held down, wanting freedom to explore things, that they're not really going to uh, see that protective energy as something that they have within them. And so they seek it from without them, right? They seek it in partners. And through doing that, you know, you kind of fill in a little bit of yourself. You fill in some of your boundaries, these gaps, these holes within your, you know, sphere of influence, right? Like, well, if I had somebody who could kind of just listen to the, the hindsight or, you know, scry with the foresight and see where things are going and kind of protect me and let me be more of my vanguard energy, then that would be just so great. Because then I could just do what fulfills me, what feels like it is giving me more energy and um, letting me be in my element, in my wheelhouse. And then I can I can just live the life that I want to live that's easy for me. And we all kind of seek this ease, right? It's, it's a part of human nature, right? We do what's easier unless we force ourselves to do other things. But when we do that, actually, you know, a lot of times we're looking into a painful future and say, well, I don't want that. So I need to do this thing now because that out there is going to be harder. Right. That's that's one way of leveraging this kind of productive energy. So a lot of us seek this other kind of energy, this polar polar energy that we don't normally have within us as a strength in another person. And then we kind of get addicted to that feeling because like we know deep down that that is something that would really help us be a better, more well-rounded person, right? The ESPs, if they have this INJ or ISJ energy within them, then they would be able to see where things are going in the longer term, right? And then they wouldn't get stuck up in like making these decisions that serve the moment and don't necessarily serve them in the future. And so within us on all of these different facets, you know, we have our auxiliary function, the mentor of our life, we have our rookie, the tertiary function, you know, we have all these different facets and focuses and things like that. We're constantly trying to balance ourselves, right? Naturally, balance is sought. Like if in, in life, in any different aspect, like you do something too much, the other side is going to start coming out and say, hey, you got to pay attention to this other side a little bit, you know, and then we start to ease back into the other way. Sometimes we go too far to the other side and it's just constantly balancing and adjusting. It's like if you were to, um, you know, driving a car or something like that, you don't just, you know, we're not talking about automated cars right now, I guess, but you don't just like set the steering wheel once and just let it go and you know you can't even go straight like that it, it kind of shifts and turns you have to constantly recalibrate and readjust in order to get to where you want to go and so seeing somebody or or falling for somebody getting hooked on somebody getting addicted to somebody who kind of makes you feel like you're starting to achieve those things feels great you know a lot of it it's a lie or it could be a crutch but it feels great because you're getting started with that. You're, you're kind of blending a little bit of that within you. And so the best thing that you can do is like use it to tap into some of your aspirations and be like, wow, this person's really good at that. My wife's an ENFJ, I'm an INFP. And, you know, we have our struggles. 
we have our struggles, but I can also see how I have improved on my extroverted feeling, my ability to, you know, have some sort of control or influence within the, uh, the social sphere. And I've also gained more control and, and comfort with different cognitive functions as well, like introverted intuition, right? This protecting aspect, but using my mind to vision where I want things to go and, and working on manifesting that. Extroverted sensing, uh, this vanguard, physical vanguard of myself is always going to be a, a mystery, but I'm starting to understand it a little bit better. You know, like people living to eat, that, that still kind of confuses me. I eat to live. I, I would take a pill if I could, and that, that's fine. Right, but I can be around that energy more, and I can see how that is a, a good thing. How it serves people, how it's entertaining, how it's it's fun, how it's a um, you know another skill set that I could grow, that I can work on. Right, and that feels good if you use it with the intention of learning about these different aspects of yourself that you lack and how you can develop those. And remember, it also shows you some of your boundary holes some of your, you know, those aspects of yourself that you haven't really fleshed out, that you haven't um, boarded up or whatever your boundary is made out of, you know, to, to patch it up in some way. And it also shows you some of your insecurities. And when you see somebody who is doing the things that you're not good at very well, and they're on your side and they're on your team, that's a good feeling, right? As long as you're, you know, you take it appropriately and you don't get like overly jealous or anything like that, but you bring them in and say, okay, well now, now we're more well-rounded. We can achieve more in the world. We can, you know, cover up each other's struggles and things like that. So these are some of my thoughts for why you would get addicted to certain personality types, why you get hooked on these different personality types and what that means at a deeper level for you and how you can leverage some of that in order to play life better. And let me know down below in the comments if this has ever happened to you and what you gained from it and maybe even what you lost from it. What were the struggles that came through being addicted to certain personality types? Keep up the lifelong questing. Good luck, have fun. Peace.